We are absolutely ecstatic. Um, we can just, all we can say is that we're grateful to the organisers to put on an event that allows the manufacturers to show the quality of their product, but at the same time give the drivers an exciting format they can use and entertain the public as well to show what the sport is really all about. Um, there is no one driver that can be singled out as winning. Although you know, we had one guy at the top, we have to say that every one of them played their part, even the guys whose scores were dropped, because the input comes from everybody. Pro 10 racing is similar to 12 scale racing, however the cars are obviously larger and extremely fast. With top speeds in excess of 50 miles an hour, the track designer Mo Griffiths had to build a new track to cope with this high speed racing. Once again each driver had to qualify in the usual way, finishing up with an A, a B, C final and so on. Here's a rundown of the A final drivers. On pole position it's that man again, David Spachette. Behind him come Mike Blackstock, Josh Cyril, Mike Swager, Joel Johnson, John Orr, Craig Drescher, Masami Hirasaka, Tony Nysinger and Andrew Moore. Before the racing began, I got trackside with one of the top team managers. We've got Sean Arlen from HPI here. Sean, I've seen all the team managers with these little gizmos. Can you uh, take me through exactly what it does? Yeah, actually these gizmos uh, look pretty unique, but what they actually are is a stopwatch. It uh, allows us several different functions and uh, it has a time function, which we don't use, really use too much. It tells you the date. We have an alarm on it, but the main function we use is a stopwatch. The uh, unique thing about this stopwatch is that it has a printer built in. When you start your clock, it prints out the day for you, the time, lets you know, you know when you are running, and then with each lap, it prints out the time for the lap and the split. It continues on, you get a full print out, it's nice because you can hand it to the driver, let him know how his performance was for that race, and everybody enjoys it. It's very convenient, very handy. Okay, thanks very much. No problem. Thank you. Heat one, and all goes quiet as the drivers wait for the off. Uh-oh. Car three, Josh Cyril, appears to have jumped forward. That could have cost him a 10-second penalty. We'll have to wait for the judge's decision. Number three car, Josh Cyril, putting him under a load of pressure. And it's Mike Swarger in third. That's the yellow fronted car, the blue rear deck. It's Dave Spashett out front, Josh Cyril and Mike Swarger. by Josh Cyril. Josh Cyril not letting go. Mike Swarger determined to try and close that gap. Now there's a fair old battle going on for the fourth place. Josh Cyril and another six car. Did I miss something? I did. Oh, we've got the wrong place on the track. Josh Cyril leads. 
made a pass. So it's Josh down the, down the straight from Dave. Mike Swagger closing that gap, getting back on turns. Heck of a race going on for four. Fifth place just changed. Craig Drescher moves into fifth. has finally been awarded to car three. It's been confirmed. Josh Tyrrell receives a penalty for a jump start. Bad news for Josh, but good news for David Spachette. Taking Josh's 10 second penalty into account, second place Spachette is effectively leading the race with two minutes left. So Dave Spachette can feel fairly happy running in second in the knowledge that Josh will lose 10 seconds off his race time. Mike Swagger moving well in third, but can't quite close that gap. The pink car of John Hall. He's trying all he knows. Two and a half minutes into the race. Right, so Dave knows that he can let Josh Sewell go. He doesn't have to push too hard. But Dave, watch Mike Swagger behind you. He's coming on hard. At the end of the race, we spoke to Josh about the judge's decision. Yeah. Uh, how did you feel about the jump start? It was a bit bad left. Uh, I know I didn't jump start, and I asked him to recheck it because I know I hit the start perfect. I concentrated very hard. I know I did not jump. Okay. The judges asked if they could use our footage to verify their decision, and you can see clearly that Josh's car moves forward on the grid whilst in the final countdown. So the win in Heat 1 goes to David Spachette. In second place was Mike Swager. John Orr was in third. Fourth was Craig Drescher. Fifth, Masami Hirasaka. Sixth, Tony Nysinger. With Andrew Moore, Josh Cyril, Mike Blackstock and Joel Johnson taking up the back positions. Heat 2 started with a blast. Spachette once again is leading, but behind him there's plenty of action. Josh Cyril is clipped from behind, almost taking him off the track. Unlucky for Josh, who moves from second place down to ninth. And then the other one was John Orr. Anyway, David Spasher, Paul Mann leads them round. Josh Cyril catches an edge there. So referees award jump start penalty to car number four. Mike Swager picks up a 10 second penalty for a jump start, taking him out of the running at this stage. And he's got Joel Johnson all over his back door. We've got race leader Dave Spasher in the uh, under timing and down the straight. Joel Johnson threw into second and down the straight. So Joel going really well. Mike Swagger's third on the track, but carrying a penalty. Masami Hirasaka is in fourth. Craig Drescher got back after that bad start, is in fifth. Right, Dave Spatchett under race control, down the main straight. Joel Johnson on the straight. Mike Swagger on the straight. Masami on the straight. If we disregard Mike, it's about Masami catching Joel. And who knows, maybe both of them are catching up on the day. Great direction as well. He's looking to close down on Masami. And we've got Mike Blackstock, John Orr. Andrew Moore, Josh Searle and Tony Nightingale. So it's two minutes, half race distance. It's one, five, eight, seven. Into the closing stages now, and Spachette is looking good for the win. If he takes this, he will secure his third world championship. Spachette indeed takes the win, and he too, and with it, the Pro 10 World Championships. There's just no stopping this guy. So here's those Heat 2 results in full.
Thank you very much. Third World Championship. Uh, yeah, you're Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Two weeks, it's just everything's just gone perfect. That last run there, getting a bit nervous towards the end. But what were you, what were you thinking, going you know, out, out so far in front with two minutes to run? Just don't hit anything. Just stay in the middle. If they catch it, just let them catch. Just don't hit anything at all. <laughs> Chance in a lifetime. So don't f up, basically. <laughs> What was your favourite one? What was the best one, most rewarding win? Uh, probably this one. It's your favourite class? 12 Scale's my favourite, but I've won it before and this one was the first time ever. Well done, mate. You've had a go. A lot of people want to congratulate Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> How do you feel then? What, what, what can you say? Proud of you, son? Very. Very big. And also the people that backed him, his, you know, his sponsors and that. It's just been brilliant. Right. I guess there's a bit of jubilation going on down there. Going into heat three, and with the title already secure, perhaps Pachette will ease off a little and just enjoy the race. Fat chance. Winners love winning, and Spachette is out in front again. Our camera crew are filming at the end of the main straight for this final. In Pro 10 racing, this has to be the most dangerous position to stand. The cars scream down the straight, reaching over 50 miles an hour as they enter the first corner. And one mistake can cause a car to leave the track and smash into the barriers. Or, as a BBC film crew discovered, a highly expensive television camera. Bad luck, guys.
Well, you guessed it, the unstoppable Spachette takes the win again. So here's those heat free results in full. First, David Spachette. Second, Joel Johnson. Third, Andrew Moore. Fourth, John Orr. Fifth, Tony Nisinger. Sixth, Mike Swager. Seventh, Masami Hirasaka. Eighth, Josh Cyril. Ninth, Craig Drescher. And tenth, Mike Blackstock. From America, finishing in third place, John Orr. In second place, Joel Johnson. <laughs> to take his third IFMAR title in two weeks, will you please welcome from Great Britain, Mr. David Spashit. Trinity team's just done great. I mean, Dave's run good, the whole team, Joel, you know, Mike, uh, Josh, I mean, the Jim Dieter and, uh, and Ryan Han, all the guys back at Trinity, Helger. I mean, just everybody's been so supportive and this is probably the best team we've ever had anywhere. And I'm just, I'm just overjoyed, <laughs> just so happy. Okay, so here's the Pro 10 World Championship final positions. In first, David Spachette. In second, Joel Johnson. In third, John Orr. Masami Hirasaka was fourth, with Mike Swager in fifth, Andrew Moore in sixth, Craig Drescher in seventh, Tony Nisinger in eighth, Josh Cyril in ninth, and Mike Blackstock in tenth position. Towards the last 27 seconds now, it's 9, 5, 6, 1, 8, 3, 2, 7, 4, and 10. That's the batting order, ladies and gentlemen. We're smashing round most turn onto the Orion Strait, down the Orion Strait towards the Kyosho turn through the KO chicane. Now into the Losi Loop, through the Losi Loop, smashing looks inside, he looks outside, he goes around the outside again, has a quick look, he's looking at his wing mirrors, he's going to grab that wing mirror next time round.
I don't know. If I was to win again, I just, I don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I'd do. I don't think it'd sink in for at least a couple of weeks. Well, two weeks. Yes. It's finished. Yes. How's it going? Very well. I think it's probably been one of the best electrics that I have been to anyway. And to run three events, one after the other, there's a new record. It's been excellent. Brian, five minutes ago we saw the third and triple world champion, Dave Splashett, finish the uh, Pro 10 event. You've been here for two weeks. What's it been like? Hell. That's the word. It's been awesome, but hell. Why? Because you have to be absolutely consistent at this level of competition. We have made sure that every call has been spot on to the second, even almost in the microsecond. I think I've made one bad call in two weeks. Uh -huh. that's, absolutely that's awesome. <laughs> I think it's been fantastic. I think the team here have done a really excellent job. And so much of these events is about what happens behind those black curtains and not what happens in front. And I think we would describe ourselves like the swan. We've been very serene on top, but we've been paddling a bit underneath. But it's been very good. We've enjoyed ourselves. It's always nice to have good drivers here. And I'm very pleased with, obviously, the results and uh, very pleased with the way the organisation has gone. <laughs> I'm glad it's all over. It's been hard work and I'm um, very grateful to all my team. It, it was a mixed team from various people. Um, Mick McDonough, um, Glyn Ward in particular over a period of time. Um, Bob Whittington as well helped me with um, the touring cars. Very, very grateful to them all. I know this is going to sound self-serving because we won, but I think it's the best Worlds we've ever attended. I mean, hardest day for me is, you know, the best organizer and Peter Winton is the best race director we've ever come in contact with. You know, Roar, Femke, <laughs> Afra, you name it. I mean, they've done a tip-top job here and it's a labor of love. I, I know that they're, you know, struggling to try to pay for this because of how much they've done. And uh, I just hope people around the world notice what a labor of love this was because they've set a new standard for world championships. and. Hopefully the USA, next time they have a chance, can only, you know, maybe do something that they've done here. It's just been a great, great three weeks. What a superb event. The standard of driving really has been excellent. I especially love the touring cars, but the Top Gun race was the best. I know what you mean. All I want to do now is grab a radio, get a car, and get out there racing. Sounds like a good idea to me, John. Why don't you get out there and start practicing? Next time we're filming the World Championship, we could be filming you. Catch you later. See ya. Have you seen this?
If you want to get the most out of your radio-controlled car, get Radio Race Car International Magazine. Every month it brings you all the news, views, and reviews from all over the world. What other magazine gives you all this? 100 full-color pages, news of all the latest kits, hop-ups, and accessories that will help you go faster, fascinating RC industry gossip, in-depth reviews of all the latest cars and equipment, brilliant free-to-enter competitions, detailed race reports with informative tech charts, highly instructive how-to articles, and thought-provoking editorial that doesn't hold its punches. Whether you're a raw beginner or a world champion, there's only one magazine you need to read. Radio Race Car International. Don't delay. Join the global family of Radio Race Car International readers today. It's the only magazine you need to read. Welcome to the second installment of Radio Race Car International Live.